Mouse Pro. I need a space mouse. One minute. If you do small small thing by then you can see the color. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in to this video and all the demos we've been doing so far. I hope you guys learned a lot and I'd like to see if you guys are making some of the things at home. So don't forget to tag me and tag us on the Facebook and Instagram so we can see the stuff that you're making. So today we're going to do a Japanese uh, cotton soft cheesecake. So what makes this cheesecake different is it's kind of meringue based. So it's going to make the cheesecake a lot lighter. We have not too many ingredients or equipment to do. It's quite fast. Less than two hours can get done with only about 30 minutes of actual hands-on time. So what we have here, we have cream cheese. We have some heavy whipping cream, granulated sugar, cornstarch, cake flour, butter, egg yolks, and egg whites. The recipe calls for eight egg yolks and eight egg whites. So basically we have eight eggs, which we just separate it into two parts. So to get started over here, we have our a bain marie started. So a pot with some warm water underneath. And that help us if we take our cream cheese, we can put in the microwave a little bit, help soften. So it's gonna break up a little bit easier. So not too long, just 30 seconds or so, help warm the cream cheese and soften it. Now here over the bain marie in a bowl, we're going to add our butter and our cream. Take the butter, put it in the pot. So we're gonna start by melting the butter and then warming the cream. And then we're gonna add in our softened cream cheese to the mixture. nice and melted. Meanwhile, I have my oven set at 160 degrees Celsius. Uh, again, from oven to oven, the temperatures are gonna change, so you may have to adjust according to your oven.
So I'm not worried about a certain temperature. Obviously, I don't want to burn the cream or scald it. But there's no specific temperature that I have to keep this mixture to. The point is just to melt the butter and also once I add the cream cheese inside, for the cream cheese to be nice and smooth and lump free. Fine. Now we can take our cream cheese. So I can start, add a little bit of the cream cheese in first. Now besides the baking, this probably is the longest part, just to make sure that we have a nice, smooth base. You see now it's quite chunky, but that's okay. We're just gonna continue whisking it until it's smooth. So if you see little chunks now, you don't panic, just keep on going. So from this slumpy mess, soon this can turn nice and smooth. Just keep on whisking up. This will be your workout at home. For the recipe that I'm doing, I'm doing a full recipe for the ones that we shared on our social media platform, the uh, Afka Malaysia and all the Academy sites. And if you guys have questions, you can feel free to put into the comment section. And also I'll be replying to some questions uh, afterwards on the demo. Okay, so you see it's starting to smooth out a bit, but we still have some lumps. We just keep on going. Okay, so now the mixture almost smooths, just a little bit of lumps left. So just start whisking a little bit more vigorously to break them up. But now we have a, a nice mixture. Okay. 
So once our batter is smooth, we can remove from the bain marine and just set aside. Now we have a KitchenAid fit with a whisk attachment, any stand mixer will do. So we're going to come with our egg whites. And begin whisking. Now we want to wait till the egg whites become a little bit foamy before we start adding in all of our sugar. Now here I'm just going to whisk this, cool down a little bit. Once we start to get some foam on the egg whites, we go ahead and then we'll start adding in the sugar. And then we're going to continue whisking until we have a firm ring. There's a lot of sugar, so the ring's still going to be a bit kind of soft, not exactly stiff peak, but it's going to be able to hold a peak. I'll show you when it's done how the meringue should look. Meanwhile, we have our egg yolks. We're going to combine the egg yolks into the cheese mixture. And then set this aside while we wait for the meringue. So here we have our cornstarch and our cake flour. We can combine them to, together. This is going to get folded in just towards the end. Also, I'm going to get some hot water ready for the water bath, in which we're going to bake with the cheese cake. So here, we just have some plain water ready for a boil. For the mold that we're going to use, you can use any shape mold you want. Uh, I like to use this one. The size of this mold is we have 20 cm by 10 cm by 5 cm height. Okay. Also, I have each of these molds fitted a little bit of oil spray on the side and the bottom, and a piece of parchment paper cut to fit the bottom of the mold. Ready? Put this 
Okay, now the meringue is almost done. I'm going to spend a minute or so on the slow speed to help break up the big and small air bubbles inside. Make more nice and smooth so we get a more smooth cheesecake. So here's our meringue. It's quite soft. It can hold a bit of a peak, but not much. So you see, if you pick it up, it's kind of runny, but it still has a little bit of strength to it. So chef, is this the consisting of meringue you're looking for? Yes. And I'm also going to take it when I do the folding, I will deflate a little bit the meringue. So what will happen if in case the meringue is too stiff? If you have a lot of air incorporated in the meringue or and you don't fold it up also the cheesecake, what's going to happen when you bake it, it's going to rise a lot and it's also going to collapse a lot as well. And also a good chance that the cake might crack on top. So uh, when I first started making this kind of cheesecake, I made the meringue. I was very careful, I didn't want to fold a lot inside. And then when I baked it, it rose a lot but then also collapsed a lot as well. And then I find out later that because the meringue is too much or not folded enough inside. So we're going to take a bit of this meringue. You're folding little by little. Yes. And here, like I said, I'm just going to, I'm a little rough at this point. One, put some of this meringue in to help lighten up the cheese batter. I'm done with the whisk. Now I'm going to alternate with meringue and also my dry ingredients. So a little bit more of the meringue as well as some of my dry, which I'm going to sift just on top like this. And then fold. Make sure to scrape down the side. Some more of the meringue. Here I can actually finish off from the rest of the meringue that I have inside. bit more of the dry. And again, and now I'm just gently folding, but also I will be deflating this a little bit. Again, I don't want too, too much air. Enough air to make the cheesecake light, but again, too much of the air inside then more trouble you can have during the baking. This doesn't mean to collapse completely. Just make sure the air pocket's nice and small and even as well. Okay, now I finish off the dry ingredient. And then 
And now, again, I'm just going to mix a little bit roughly. Just help <coughs> deflate any parts that have too much air. Chef Angelo, maybe later we have some questions we'll ask you at that time. Yeah, Chef, of course. This part almost done. So that's basically it for the making of the cheesecake. The rest is just doing the baking and then waiting. It's really, really simple. Okay. So now we're gonna come, pour into the mold about 90%, oh, a little bit of meringue there, about 90% full. Now I'm going to place in my oven that I set at 160 degrees with a water bath. Now comes that water that I was preparing before, the hot water. and then we'll set a timer for about 45 minutes. Once the cheesecake is gonna rise and bake, then we're gonna increase the temperature about 10 degrees, so up to 170, 175, to get a, a nice color on the top. This water inside is gonna help create some steam, so we have some moisture, so the surface is not gonna rise up, dry, and then crack on top. So that's it for making the, the cheesecake. Now, because you don't have 45 minutes, just to wait for this to come out of the oven, I have some of the cheesecake that's already been baked and unmolded. Just here, just like this. Now, it helps to put inside the freezer a little bit. It's gonna make cutting a little bit more cleaner and easier. And also, we'll use a little bit of hot water to cut. So we'll take a sharp knife. Okay, this part is for you to snack on so we can cut some nice clean piece.
If you want, we can also trim the sides because we use an oval shaped pan. If you want some nice square sides, we can go ahead and just trim here. Get some nice clean sharp edges on the cheesecake. Now this uh, trimmings, uh, please, there's no waste. So in a hotel operation or restaurant operation, we could mix this into ice cream or use it for another part of another dessert. Or at home, this is just your reward for taking so much time for baking. You can snack. You know, you have the taste test first. nice plate and if you like also very nice we can serve with a, a nice pot of sencha as well when you making the sencha another tip from a avid tea fan water not exactly boiling about 80 degrees Okay, that's it for making the cheesecake. I hope you guys can make it home. Uh, again, if you guys make, feel free to tag me so I can see your lovely creations all of you guys are doing. And I wish you guys the, the best to make this at home as well. Bye guys, thank you very, very much. I hope to see you again. We'll be doing more demos and also I'll be back to do some more demos as well. Chef Angelo, we have one question. Yes. Uh, in case uh, the international students want to study in Akka mm -hmm. schools, uh, what do you suggest us actually? Uh, actually, in, we do have schools all over the Asia. So first of all, if you're located, we have a school in Malaysia. We have three schools in India. We also have Indonesia and Philippines as well. But also Philippines, we have the ability to take international students on short-term visas. Our Philippine school is actually located in a Treston International College in BGC. Really beautiful campus, uh, very nice facilities, and also a very great staff. So if you're not in one of these countries, you don't worry. You can also get an inter international student visa there. And also we have the ability of doing our intensive and programs as well as master classes as well. Uh, pastry students or culinary students who are already studying in some school or graduated some college or home bakers, what do you actually suggest for them as per the growth plan? If they want to grow further, what they can do? Is there some short-term program, like uh, one month kind of a thing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we have a lot of students that come from other schools that come join us as well. We have professionals that come in. So we have people that have already studied at some other university uh, for whatever degree they want to study and now they want to further their patient culinary. They've come and joined our full nine months program just to enhance their skills and get really what the hands-on experience is like. But also for people who maybe don't have the full nine months, we have professionals and students that come in for our uh, intensive programs. We have a two week bakery program that's all on bread from start to finish. We have a two week chocolate program that's all about chocolate start to finish. We have two different intensive programs that are one month of classes broken down into three day classes 
which the students are can take the entire program or also can come in for three days at a time, three days at a time and learn specific topics that they want to learn, even if they don't have a month uh, come in all at one shot. We have our part-time program as well, which for people who are home bakers, maybe looking to do something at home, maybe just do something for their friends, is also a very good program for them as well. Thank you, Chef. All right, thank you very much again. Uh, again, please, I can't wait to see you guys make some cheesecake at home and uh, enjoy it. <laughs>